What's up guys, this is Showtime's Fight Forum. I'm your boy Josh Showtime, you already know what it is. This is where we talk all things fights. Now listen, if I sound a little hoarse, I sound a little bad, I'm a little under the weather. I'm also kind of was on vacation, I got sick there. So I was also screaming and yelling because I was doing some fun stuff. But, you know, I'm gonna try to get through this as, as fast and easy as possible. We're still talking about the topics that I want to talk about today. And this is going to be a recap over last weekend. Yes, I was on vacation, but I still was watching the fights. Pray for my wife. <laughs> because, you know, I, I, yes, this is not my official career, but this is the goal in my life is to eventually become big enough where millions of people are watching and I can be able to break down these fights. Uh, so, you know, I have to do this now while I'm not making any money for it. And she has to go through it sometimes to watch these fights when she doesn't want to. Because she likes fights, but she don't like knowing near as much as I do. But this last fight, um, fight card for the UFC, which was the last fight card of the year, for in my opinion, a, a little bit of a disappointing year. Not not as far as like action-packed fights, but as far as like you know memorable cards, you know memorable fights and things like that. Like yes, it was a very good year, but you know I wouldn't say that this year ascended. I feel like UFC has been ascending, ascending, ascending. Even with the pandemic, you were getting like the best fights ever still. But this year, this was lacking, like not just star power, but it was just like memorable fights. Like, you know, it just wasn't the best year. But this card was a very good card. You know, we got a lot of finishes. Um, there were some interesting names up there. It wasn't, you know, it's a fight night card. So it's not gonna be, you know, championship fights or anything like that, but it was still a good card, uh, you know. I, I kind of want to you know, talk about some of the people before the main event. Uh, and that is, first I want to start off with Brian Battle, uh, the tough winner. Guy slept on a little bit. I thought that Gore was going to beat him, but he ended up winning. And honestly, he's looked pretty good so far in his stint. But he didn't have a good showing last week. It was, it was, not, it was not a good fight. Uh, it, it showed a major hole in his game, which is his wrestling. Yeah, and it's one of those situations where, you know, he's young, so he can definitely get better at it. However, I just didn't like how easily he was getting bullied around. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's a little disheartening. So, so you know, it's a glaring hole, something that he's gonna have to now recognize because it was like, some of those takedowns were just so easy. It's like, you know the next fights you're gonna go into, guys aren't gonna necessarily want to or care to strike with you. Not because you're some fearful striker, but just because, bro, I just seen what happens when I take you down. You really don't offer too much. But, you know, hopefully, you know, he can, he can uh, go back to the drawing board and figure it out. Once again, he's young, so, you know, his voice. He can easily get better, much better at it. Uh, so, um, outside of that one, you know, I had to talk about Drew Dober versus Bobby Green. And it, once again, it just goes to show how talented this freaking division is. Bobby Green and Drew Dober, neither one of these guys are ranked. They're, they're ranked worthy. These guys are great fighters. Like, very, very good. But lightweight is just so freaking tough. Like they're just good. Like like realistically, those two guys, either one of them guys are fighting uh, Patty. I will favor them over Patty. That's not to say Patty can't beat either or because potentially I, I feel like he has more of a chance versus Drew than than Bobby, which is weird to say because obviously Drew, Drew just slept him. But it's just all about matchups, you know. At the end of the day, I don't think Patty would be able to take down Bobby, and I don't think he'd be able to keep him down and stand up. He's getting he's getting attacked. Like it's gonna be bad, very bad for Patty. It's, the Patty the Batty would got very beat got beat very badly. So, you know, it's yeah, that was a dad joke. But um, yeah, and, and then Drew Dober, you know, he's a he's a he's a guy that can crack. And this fight was 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 fire. Bobby Green, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I haven't seen his hands look that fast, like ever. Like, I'm not to say he has slow hands, but they look exceptionally fast versus Drew. Maybe Drew's just that slow, but he was catching him whatever he wanted to with that too. And then when he went to jab him up, he jabbed him up. He was getting, and, and Drew was getting countered. Like, it was getting bad. Like, Drew was getting picked apart pretty well. But Drew is showing that he's starting to come along, and he's a little older. It's not like he's young, but he's starting to pick up stuff. He's starting to realize that his method of winning might just have to be, he has to get dropped, or he has to eat a bunch of punches to be able to land or get that stoppage finish that he likes to do. Um, and then you go back to Terrence McKinney when he was getting whooped. By Terrence, but what happened? Whether the storm and he got the finish with Bobby Green is a little bit less of the same. It, where he was, it was a storm, it wasn't nowhere near as bad as Terrence, but he was getting pieced up pretty good. And he starts spamming those left hooks, whoop, one catch him. Bobby got slept. Great fight. Uh, I mean, I thought it was the best fight in the main card, but I mean, there's a lot of um, um guys that's in that that, that was in this card that was. Once again, it's not like these are 
like number one contender fights. But these are fights that are very, very relevant within the picture of climbing up the ranks. So um, you can obviously go um, the co-main and the fight was a little lackluster. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to say that it wasn't the, the greatest fight in the world. Uh, 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 he relied on his wrestling a lot more than honestly, I expected because when he went, when he fought Gamrot, you know, he wanted to keep the fight standing. I don't know because it was a, a, a big distinct advantage. And also Gamrot just kept clearly wanted to just wrestle. But I didn't think it was going to be so wrestle heavy in the co-main. Uh, he got the win and you know, I, I do think that we need to start getting these guys, the Dustin Poirier's, the Justin Gaethje's, and Michael Chandler's. They got to start fighting these guys because it's it's really not fair because they're not able to prove themselves as the top contenders because, unfortunately, the older fighters are holding up the division because they only want title shots. They don't want to fight these young guys. I get it. It's kind of what boxing does. But at the same time, if UFC is saying boxing, you ain't really got much to say. They ain't tell you what you do. Um, so, yeah, fight wasn't... Mm -hmm. I have to really talk about that too much. But also, I gotta bring up Bruce freaking Leroy. What the? I just concept what in the heck, bro? That kick was fire, man. And I, I've been a big fan of him since Tough. And I'm happy that, you know, he's been able to stick around. Like, I know he had a bad stand. I believe he got cut at one point, came back, and, and he's having a bit of a second run. You know, I'm not saying he's obviously not like on a win streak or nothing like that, but he's been getting some good W's. And he puts on some very exciting fights. Like I always think about him and Yair. That was a weird, fun fight that now would happen. Like, Yair would probably kill him. But at that point in time, it was a really good five round fight. Now, man, that sneaky kick. And, and it, it was it was my that performance of the night for me. And it's crazy because uh, uh, Show Center, uh, what the Sports Center posted it. And you could tell it was a white person that ran that because they ended up putting it, pick stitching it with a picture of uh, Bruce Lee. And then they put Lee Roy on there as if like it's a play on words, which if you know why he's called Bruce Lee Roy, it isn't because of the actual Bruce Lee. It's because there's an actual character from The Last Dragon who's black named Bruce Lee Roy. Yes, the character in The Last Dragon is, um, is a black version of Bruce Lee, but it, it's not. Alex Casares that looks like Bruce. Bruce Lee, I mean, I'm not Bruce Lee. Alex Casares literally looks like the character that played Bruce Lee. That's the reason why he got that name. And also, he got a bit of a public style. So, it was just, you clearly know, like, if you're, if, I ain't gonna say only black people know, but obviously, black movie, you obviously know about, you know, Show Enough and uh, The Last Dragon and all that good stuff. But yeah, excellent knockout, lived up to the nickname, and I'm happy for that guy. Super happy. Now, in reality, what I need to talk about, what fight I really want to talk about is the main event, the fight that, you know, we all come to see. And that was Jerry Cannonier versus Sean Strickland. Now, this is what I actually was interested in seeing because it's a complex of styles, man. Like, you have the power puncher in Jerry Cannonier, and then you have the, the volume puncher and the, the loud mouth of Sean Strickland. I thought this fight was going to be a lot more exciting than it was. So just got to keep it, keep it above. That fight was very, very mid. Mid as mid as mid as can be. Like I, I was highly disappointed. I thought it was gonna be fireworks, honestly. One, just because Jared does like to bring fights. Like he does like to fight, man. Like he's a fighter. He's been in some stinkers, but he is a fighter. And Sean Strickland, he talks a lot. You and, and you see his gym videos. You, it looks like he's always down to scrap. I'm I'm learning now. Sean Strickland's all talk. His gimmick is the gimmick I hate the most. All right, I know I said I don't like uh, uh, Kobe Covington because of his gimmick. Here's the thing, Kobe Covington, for all the crap that he gets from people, I'm one of the few people that say he's actually very entertaining. I love his fights because it's nonstop action. He doesn't shy away. Even if he takes you down, he's always trying to work something. Even if it's fake work, he still at least looks like he's busy. He doesn't just lay on you, do nothing. He'll cover your, he'll cover your mouth, he'll pitter pat you, he'll go for fake chokes. Like at least he's doing something. All right, he's aggressive. I'll take aggressiveness over anything. All right, now you never will sit here and say, "Oh, Kobe looks like he's sparring." No, he doesn't. He looks like he's going literally 100 miles per hour. Uh, you know, I don't like his stick, but at least he backs up his stick with you know activity. Sean is a guy who acts like he's a serial killer, but is literally a freaking dog walker. Like, like it, it's so frustrating. Put it like this, yo: if if a serial killer fought, I mean, a serial, a serial killer was a killer. Uh, the way that Sean Strickland fight, there would be no serial killer. 
There'll be no mass murderers. There will be no Ted Bundys, no John Wayne Gates. There'll be none of them. Because this guy's all talk. He doesn't do what he says. Ah, man, like, I, I can't live in a normal society. I'll just kill a man. But <laughs> like that? No, you're not. You, you, you'll kill me to sleep. You don't do anything. You're always in second gear. You always look like you're sparring. Like light sparring too, not heavy sparring. Like you're just chilling. Like, I don't I don't know. I just really learned, I'm learning that he's a guy that's just talking so he can get paid. I think he's a genuinely nice guy. I think I think Sean Strickland's a nice guy. Little do we know, this man's married with four kids and he got a dog. And at the end of the day, he's a very happy man. He is this, I don't, I don't care about this stick, man. And he wants to get mad, call people pussies and all this stuff because he think he he thought he won. The fight was close. Neither one of y'all did much. You did nothing. Jared Cannonier landed the harder blows. I gave it to Jared Cannonier too. I thought he won 4 1. Like, was I mad? Would I have been mad if they would have gave him Strickland? No, but at the same time, I'd have been like, what did he do? Oh, he he jabbed him. Ooh, Jared didn't seem bothered. Oh, he hit him with a 1 2. Okay. And here's the thing people try to make it seem like he's some big technician. I'm going to be honest with you guys, but his technique's trash. You want to, he's basically primarily a boxer that does teams, and his boxing techniques are terrible. Like, it doesn't matter. You put him up against a good boxer, he gets outboxed. You put him against a good kickboxer, we saw what the hell happened. He's not as good as what, what is advertised, and he's nowhere near as good as what he said. Uh, is he a top 15, top 10 fighter? Sure. At the middle, middleweight division, yes, but it's also not the strongest division. I don't think it's a, a weak division, but it's not a strong division. I I, I might be poo-pooing on Sean, but I just don't like that all talk and you don't back it up. Like, you talk all this stuff about Izzy being boring. You're boring. Sorry, bro. You're boring. Don't want to hear you talk no more. Just fight. Like that last minute or whatever of that fight, you should have been doing the entire fight. You're gonna be don't don't pussyfoot around and back up, back off all the time. Don't just throw one twos and then literally like just like follow up, bro. Throw some combinations, real combinations. Tie like 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 it's just it's boring. It's not active. Like you're not gonna win fights that way. You really want to win fights, then act like you do. So like I said, I, I'm off on Sean Strickland, um, Jerry Cannonier. I mean. Cool win, whatever. Um, I, I, I'm actually a fan of Jared, Jared Cannonier, but I need to see more. So, I mean, the division is kind of wide open. And I would love to see Jared Cannonier versus Shamaya. Uh, that's a person that we know is going to fight. And that's a good test for both men. So, if possible, can we get uh, a Shamaya versus Jared Cannonier? I mean, I don't know about y'all. But as always, man, you know, this is Showtime's Fight Forum. We talk all things fight. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Follow me on social media at John Showtime or Papa Showtime. And as always, guys, be blessed.